G'day guys, in this video we're going to learn how to apply a reverb to a track in the track effects area and also we're going to learn how to apply it to individual clips in the take effects area. So let's fire up Reaper and get started. So we've opened up Reaper and created a new project. We're going to save that straight away. Save project as, let's call it year 8 T2, task 4.1, your name. Have these two checkboxes checked and hit save. We're going to head up to the audio preferences now and ensure that the input device is the mic that we want to be using, whether it's the external iPhone headset I have plugged in, or if you're using the internal array or a USB mic you might have. I'll use the headset, and I'm going to go out of that headset as well. So I'll force that to be that output. 24-bit will sound better than 16-bit, so let's go with that and hit OK. So our first step is always just checking that the recording levels are appropriate. So double click to make a new track, arm that track for recording, um, toggle the mixer off if it happens to be on with control M, page up to zoom in. And I've got a really nice big meter there now telling me that the my speech is sort of, has peaked out at 10.5 while I've been talking. Um, right now it's sort of averaging around the 12, minus 12 mark. So that's a really good level, minus 11. We talked about between around about minus nine decibels to minus 20. If it's up around the nine level, that's still a good amount of headroom before it might clip if you unexpectedly speak loud. Um, or if it's down at minus 20, it's still sort of loud enough that the um, when you raise things, the noise floor is not going to raise too much. But if you go any less than minus 20, um, when you apply gain later on, you're probably going to be bringing up your noise floor because your signal to noise ratio will be not too great. So yeah, please make those adjustments as required to your gain settings. If you do need to make those adjustments to gain, you might recall, right click on the speaker, open sound settings, go to the input device, make sure it's the one you want to deal with, device properties, check the level there. And you can actually, you can see it making changes to the um, meter there in the background as you go. So it's kind of cool um, if you have that meter visible while you tweak this. And 90 is where I want, close that down and we're good to go. Okay, so track one is armed, ready to record. Let's do it. This is Mr. Weber demonstrating the sound of my voice in a location with no reverb, such as out in the middle of the oval with no walls to reflect the sound. I'm going to trim the end off there. I'm going to turn off the magnet because I'm not dealing with music. Trim that there. Trim the beginning. Bring it to the front. And as I said, I'm not going to apply any uh, reverb to this track. So we can move on. I'll hit, I can use the square bracket to move the playhead to the end of that recording. I can then hit Control T to start a new track. And I'm going to use page down to adjust my zoom level, vertical zoom. We've created track two and we're ready to go. So we've disarmed track one, otherwise you'll be recording on both tracks like this, which we don't really need to do. So disarm track one. And here we go with our recording. Now I'm standing inside a large tiled room, which has many hard surfaces reflecting the sound and giving a very reverberant sound. Trim the end. Just go back to here. Trim that, and now we're going to actually go to the Show Track Effects window button. The effect we're after, we're going to search for Verb. It's the rear Verb 8, and let's just bring that over here. We're going to leave the dry signal at minus 3. That means the original source is going to stay at that minus 3 decibel level. We're going to reduce the um, affected level to about minus 12-ish. I could type in minus 12. And the next thing we're going to change is the room size. We're going to make it 85, which should sound like quite a big room. Now I'm standing inside a large tiled room, which has many hard surfaces reflecting the sound and giving a very reverberant sound. I'm happy with those settings. I close the effect window. 
I do like a bit of color, so I'm going to click on those two and track color, random colors, beautiful. We're going to actually make another recording after the recording we just did on track two. So keep track two armed and uh, read out this script. Since I've added the reverb effect in the track effects area, the reverb effect will also apply to any other audio clips we record or move on to this track, meaning that this recording will also sound like I'm in a large room. Okay, so now if we listen back to those recordings, trim that one if you like. Oops, so that trim there is adjusting both of them. I want to move it so it only does one of them. And drag that over. Now just have a listen to this second one. You remember we added reverb to that one. This is reflecting the sound and giving a very reverberant sound. Since I've added the reverb effect in the track effects area, the reverb effect will also apply to any other audio clips we record or move on to this track, meaning that this recording will also sound like I'm in a large room. So you can actually disable the effect, um, or as I said, you could drag another track on there. This is Mr. Weaver demonstrating the sound and anything dragged on there will be affected. Okay, so that's how you deal with the track, track effects area. It applies it to anything on that track. Square bracket will take me to the end. Trim the end there a bit and square bracket again. So now I'm going to create track three, arm it, disarm track two, hit record. I will now experiment with adding reverb to individual clips on one track rather than applying the effect to the whole track. This means I can have no reverb on this clip, but I'll split the clip with the S key right here. Then I'll add a reverb effect with a room size of 30 to this clip using the take effects menu, which might sound like a small hallway with hard walls and floors which create reverb. But the room size is small, so the reflected sound reaches our ears sooner than in the large room. I'll split the recording here. And next I'm in a medium sized room with a room size of 50. Another split here. This large room has a room size of 85 and I sound like I'm close to the listener as the dry untreated sound is higher in the mix than the wet echoes. This is a room size of 85 again, but, it, but this time I will reduce the volume level of the dry original sound and just keep the wet reverberations, which makes the sound seem to be originating further away in my soundscape. Okay, so let's now go through, trim the end of that, trim this one here, I might even hit M to place a marker there. And let's have a listen to the point where I say I should split it. I will now experiment with adding reverb to individual clips on one track, rather than applying the effect to the whole track. This means I can have no reverb on this clip, but I'll split the clip with the S key right here. Okay, I said I'd split it there, S key. Then I'll add a reverb effect with a room size of 30 to this clip using the take effects menu which might sound like a small hallway with hard walls and floors which create reverb. But the room size is small, so the reflected sound reaches our ears sooner than in the large room. I'll split the recording here. Okay, let's split it. And next I'm in a medium sized room with a room size of 50. Another split here. You know, I could even delete that little statement if I wanted to. I'll leave it there for now though. This large room has a room size of 85 and I sound like I'm close to the listener as the dry untreated sound is higher in the mix than the wet echoes. Split that, let's bring it forward so I don't waste time. This is a room size of 85 again, but, it, but this time I will reduce the volume. Hey, a little bit of a mistake there, hey? Again, but, it, but this time, so that little hesitation there, false start, get rid of it, five again. But this time, I will reduce the volume level of the dry original sound and just keep the wet reverberations, which makes the sound seem to be originating further away in my soundscape. Okay, so that's the splitting we had to do. Let's come back, save it at this point, Control S. Um, let's now give it a color, just for fun. Oh, it's a bit similar, let's change that. There we go. All right, so. If we remember rightly, I said I wouldn't apply any effect to uh, clip one, we'll call that. For clip two, we're actually going to right click on it and go to take, show effects chain for the active take. And then we do want to add the reverberate plugin. So that filter is quite helpful. We can clear the filter if we ever 
want a different uh, kind of plugin, Reverbate. And let's go through and do what we said we would do, which was set the room size to 30. And we're going to reduce the wet sound to minus 6. And leave the dry untouched at minus 3. And let's have a listen to this. Then I'll add a reverb effect with a room size of 30 to this clip using the take effects menu, which might sound like a small hallway with hard walls and floors which create reverb. But the room size is small, so the reflected sound reaches out ears sooner than in the large room. I'll split the recording here. You know, you could um, get rid of that one. Why don't we do that now? And let's look at the instructions I have for the next clip. For clip three, we're going to right click on it, take, show effects for the active take, and reverberate again. Now for this one, the room size is already set to 50, and we're just going to reduce the wet sound to minus 9. And let's have a listen to what that sounds like. In a medium sized room, with a room size of 50, another split here. We can get rid of that statement, and bring that forward a bit. And close the take effects for that previous one. They won't apply to this new one we want to do. Close that down and let's this time use Shift E, which is the shortcut for bringing up the, um, the take effects. Reverberate. And see how it added that green icon there? And now it says also which item it's applying it to. 1549 is the one there. So let's follow our instructions of setting this to 85 and reducing the wet signal to minus 12. We've also said to add the initial delay to be 10 milliseconds. And let's have a listen to this effect. This large room has a room size of 85, and I sound like I'm close to the listener, as the dry, untreated sound is higher in the mix than the wet echoes. Okay, so that's because we have the dry at minus three, and the wet is minus 12. Here, you see how I, I made a correction. Uh, there's two things we could do here. Either I could apply the effect here and copy it across to that one as well, by just dragging it over, or, what I'm going to do is actually glue them. So let's have a listen to this. It's 85 again, but this time I'll leave a little bit. I'm going to leave a bit of space. Size of 85 again, but this time I'll. That's natural enough. I'm going to hold Shift to select them both, or do a right mouse button box, and do glue items. Now they've uh, become a glued single item. Now for this next one, we mentioned we want to sound further away in the mix. So let's click on that fifth clip and hit shift E, bring up that rear verbate. We're actually going to put our wet down to minus 12, put our dry to minus 30. We're going to set the room size to 85. We're going to set the initial delay to 10 milliseconds and put a high pass filter of 200 hertz on this one. And let's have a listen to this. this Okay, so that there sounded a bit like we're in a big hole, but further away from the listener than the previous one that had a similar room size, but um, it had the dry up higher. Large room has a room size of 85, and I sound like I'm close to the listener, as the dry untreated sound is higher in the mix than the wet echoes. This is room size of 85. Okay, so don't forget to keep saving with Control S every few steps you take. We've now finished the recordings we're making, so it's time just to zoom out with the down arrow. I'm going to hit W to rewind, use the down arrow till I can see my whole project. I'm going to adjust with page up and page down, so I've got a good screenshot. I might as well turn off the arming of that track. And I'm now going to render the MP3 file render. We want the master mix, the entire project. We want it to be task, yes, it's already named correctly, 4.1. We don't want to do a WAV file, we want to compress it to an MP3 and hit render. Notice it's at safe levels, peaking out around minus 9. And you see how quiet my last one was in comparison to the others. Show an explorer. And there's the MP3 we'd upload. Close that down. Then of course, we remember how to screenshot. We've already got it set out perfectly for our screenshot. 
uh, framing the whole project with all the tracks visible and then Windows print screen. Then navigate to the pictures screenshot folder and rename the screenshot to match the task name uh, and upload that PNG file and you're done. So hopefully now you can remember how to apply a reverb effect to a whole track or else to apply it to individual clips within that track which gives you a lot of flexibility. Thanks for joining me.